Hey everyone, so I was asked how you raise baby seahorses. Um, someone had a patch, I guess, and I'm sorry I got to this too late. Um, hopefully you found help somewhere else first. So basics of seahorse rearing. Um, if you can anticipate that you're going to have a hatch, it makes it a million times easier to successfully rear your babies. Um, most seahorses will mate for life, and if you know that you have a mated pair, um, you can ex you can expect eggs pretty regularly, or not eggs, but they'll do a mating dance. Tran the female will transfer eggs to the male. Um, um, it usually takes about two weeks for most seahorse species to actually give birth. Um, if a male has a really full, poofy pouch, um, you can probably anticipate that you're going to have baby seahorses soon. So if you know that you are going to have baby seahorses, and like you saw um, mating behavior a couple um, early on, mark it down on your calendar and look up the mating behavior and um, gestation period for your species of seahorse. Most seahorses are have been raised in captivity enough times where it's pretty well documented and published. Try Google Scholar. It's a great way to look at basics about different animals. Um, so what you're going to do, you need a rearing tank and you want to pick something that ideally doesn't have corners and is opaque. Uh, if you don't have something that is opaque, you can just tape black construction paper on the edges. Baby seahorses are really, really stupid. They will kill themselves in corners and under sand and by swallowing air bubbles. So we want to eliminate all of that or as much of that as possible. Um, baby seahorses will actually swim into the corner of a tank and keep swimming in that corner, not moving until they end up dying from energetic exhaustion. So we want to avoid that. Uh, really good things that you can raise baby seahorses in. Clean buckets. They work great. Uh, they're already opaque, so you don't have to put any construction paper on them. Um, you can use critter keepers. They're cylindrical plastic critter keepers. Most pet stores have them. They're pretty cheap. Get the biggest one you can find. You can also use a really large spherically shaped fish tank uh, or fish bowl. That will work pretty well. If you happen to have like a hexagon tank with pretty rounded corners, that can work well. Um, just Try and get rid of corners. Corners are bad. So is sand. You don't want to put any substrate. You want a completely clean bottom. Maybe seahorses will manage to get stuck under sand grains and rocks. I don't know how, but they do it. They're, they're just talented with their stupidity. Um, you, what you're going to do is you're going to fill that your rearing tank up with source water from your parent stock fish tank. So whatever fish tank your adults are in, use water from that tank to set up your baby um, rearing tank. You want to move your male seahorse into that tank a couple days before you think he'll drop eggs. You don't want to lift up your male out of the water or use a net. Just gently pick him up, put him in a cup full of water, and move him that way. You never want to pull him out, especially while he's pregnant. So you're going to place your male in the tank. You want to put something for the baby seahorses to hang on to as well as the male. Just a simple plastic plant, like just one, or a piece of screen, anything that they can hold on to that also a baby seahorse can hold on to. They're about the size of a grain of rice, so using actually like fine um, hard plastic mesh works pretty well. You want like about that much space um, in between the mesh for baby seahorses to grip onto. Nitex screen can work if you have a big size. Um, whatever you think, they're pretty easy. Uh, you want to keep filtration out of that tank unless you have a pseudo chrysal setup. I can ask my former boss Wendy Lee, she's now at Dallas World Aquarium, if I can share her um, construction method for making a pseudo chrysal. Pseudo chrysals you can sneak filtration into, but generally for seahorse rain tanks, like especially if they're in a bucket, you don't want filtration. It'll mulch your baby seahorses. If there's too much water flow, they can end up killing them. We don't want that. Um, all the only thing you're going to have in your tank other than water is an airline. Take off the air stone. You don't want fine bubbles. Baby seahorses can actually eat them. If a seahorse ingests too much oxygen, they will float up to the surface of the tank and die. So you're just going to cut off the air stone or pull it off, weight it down, and you want a large bubble to come out of the airline maybe every second or so. You want it to be like bubble, 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 that type of thing. The point of the bubbles, you want to keep oxygenation, and you also want to keep the water flowing in a convex kind of motion. If you can set up a drip line, um, maybe from your tank, or if you can just set up a drip line so you have continuous clean water feeding into the tank, it makes it much easier to keep things clean. So if that's possible at all for you, or if you can set up a pseudopraisal, go ahead and try and do that. It'll make your life a million times easier. Um, so your male is going to be in that tank. 
and hopefully he'll give birth in there. As soon as the male gives birth, you can go ahead and pull him out and put him back in his um, previous tank. If your seahorse accidentally gives birth in the fish tank, what you want to do is you don't want to expose your seahorses to oxygen at all. Do not use a net to catch them out. You will end up killing all your seahorses that way. You can use a turkey baster and suck them very slowly and gently, or you, I would just use a cup. Just scoop them up in a cup, don't expose them to air at all, and put them in their rearing tank. Um, for one of the things you want to anticipate when you're rearing or going to be rearing seahorses is feeding them. It will be a bit tricky at first, and you need to feed your seahorses a lot. Uh, one of the easiest foods that's commercially available is Artemia noplii. So that's brine shrimp, and you can buy brine shrimp eggs at most pet stores or online. You're going to take those brine shrimp and start a culture bottle every three days, you know, every two or three days. So you can do a culture bottle with a two liter soda bottle, flip it upside down. So it's cap side facing down. Um, you want the cap on and then you want to mount it somehow to anything solid just so you can keep it standing up. Cut off the bottom of that soda bottle, fill it with water um, as per the directions on how to hatch your Artemia. Dump in your Artemia eggs, um, just follow the directions on the package, and raise out Artemia. So those one to three day old newly hatched baby brine shrimp are a great first food for seahorses. It can get kind of expensive if you're raising a lot of seahorses, but generally speaking, I mean, if you're just doing it for fun, it's pretty doable. Um, you can also feed them copepods or rotifers, but if you're feeding those types of cultures out, you need to know how to culture algae in order to feed those as well as maintain your other cultures. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, I would only feed Artemia noplia unless you're experienced with um, cultured foods. So you will feed your baby seahorses uh, in the morning and in the afternoon or evening. Uh, you always want there to be a slight orangish or pinkish tint to the water because you have so many Artemia noplii in there. Seahorses don't, baby seahorses don't actively hunt. If something goes past their face, they will snip, like they'll kind of snick at it and try and eat it. So if, even if you see Artemia in there, if there's not a high enough density of them, they're not going to be eating. You want it to just like literally be so much that's in front of their faces at all times. Baby seahorses, eat a lot, they produce a fecal pellet, so they poop every 20 minutes. That will lead to water quality problems. Um, what you want to do every day is siphon out all the junk on the bottom of your tank, and you also want to do partial water changes. What I would do for partial water changes is slowly siphon off some of maybe 20% of the water from your rearing tank and replace it with water from the parent tank. Make sure that the temperatures are the same and you don't want to system shock them. Drip it in slowly, just set up a drip line, just keep the water clean. Um, you can make a siphon that works well for a baby seahorse tank with a straw and a piece of airline housing. Just stick them together and boom, you have a pretty simple siphon that you can use to suck up to try this off the bottom of the um, tank. One of the biggest killers of baby seahorses is just bacterial infection and general water cleanliness. If you have a whole bunch of baby seahorses, like maybe a, a hundred, I mean, I'd go with say anything more than 50, you might want to consider setting up two different buckets of seahorses or just leaving some in the tank. I mean, most likely they will die, but I would just take, you know, you want to maximize your chances of success. So maybe just try and race 30 the first time. Um, I mean, go ahead and try whatever you want. See what works for you. I would recommend possibly setting up two buckets and, you know, just try and feeding them different amounts. Like give one a little bit extra and keep one at a more moderate amount. You'll eventually figure out what works for you. You always want to see your baby seahorses actively hunting and eating. You'll know baby seahorses are eating if their bellies are pink. If you look at them and they have a little orange or pink tummy, that's great. It means that your baby seahorses are eating. If you don't see that and they stay pretty skinny, they're not eating, you might not have the density at a high enough rate or there might be a different problem, possibly water quality. Um, one thing you can do to minimize mortality of baby of your baby seahorses, after the first day of the hatch, um, put a piece of bubble wrap over the top of the tank. This will keep your baby seahorses from accidentally sucking up air when they try and catch something at the surface. If they suck up an air bubble, they can die. But for that first day, you want to leave it uncovered. Um, some baby seahorses need to go to the surface and take a small bubble to fill with foam bladder. So you don't want to prevent them from doing that when they first hatch. But at after the first day, go ahead and you can cover maybe two thirds of the tank with bubble wrap. This will save some of your baby seahorses. Just make sure you don't cover the whole thing. You want gas exchange to take place and you don't want to cook them with heat. 
um, pretty much you have to be diligent when you raise any kind of larval fish. Uh, you need to feed them twice a day. You can't miss a day. If you miss a day or even sometimes if you miss a morning feeding, you'll come home and everything will be dead. So you have to stay on top of it. Um, with feeding out the Artemia, start a new culture bottle every three days. The Artemia are only really ben or nutritionally beneficial to the baby seahorses if they're between that one and three day period when they still have a yolk sac. Do not feed adult Artemia to baby seahorses. A lot of pet stores sell adult Artemia. A lot of the time those are adult Artemia are big enough where they can eat your baby seahorses and they're just too big for them to consume. Um, if they do try and eat them, a lot of the time they'll choke to death. So don't do that. Just don't feed adult Artemia. Just feed Nopliae that you have hatched yourself. I mean, I've tried the shortcuts and they did not work. So I would just go with my mistakes and don't do it. Um, let's see. After you have your baby seahorses eating, um, once they get, I mean, it's pretty well published. So you can look up how long it should take for your seahorses to get to about an inch or so, maybe inch and a half big. Um, once they're at that point, you can pretty comfortably move them into your parent tank. Uh, just make sure that there aren't any super aggressive larger fish that could accidentally slurp them up or intentionally slurp them up. Um, if they're about an inch, inch and a half long, you can start trying to feed them chopped up mysis shrimp. Uh, the way you do that, just buy the small size of mysis shrimp that you can get frozen, chop it into little bits, and mix it in with the live food. You want to keep live food until you know that every single baby seahorse you have is eating the frozen stuff. Um, once you switch and train your seahorses to eat frozen foods, do not go back to live foods. You might do it as a treat every once in a while, but if you kind of switch in between, if you get them to eat frozen and then you switch them back to live, sometimes they will only eat live food and you can't get them back on frozen. So don't undo all of your training. Just feed them chopped up frozen mysis shrimp at the beginning and eventually get them to eat what your adults are eating um, if you can get them that far. Uh, good luck rearing baby seahorses and rearing seahorses in general. I've worked mostly with Hippocampus cuda and Hippocampus reedi, but rearing them is generally the same for most commonly um, available commercial species. If you have any questions or if something I said didn't make sense, feel free to go ahead and ask. Um, I have to say that everything I learned about seahorse rearing came from Wendy Lee at Dallas World Aquarium. If you get a chance, talk to her. I also learned a lot from Karen Britton at Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. She was actually one of the, I believe she was the first woman who ever raised um, Hippocampus fishi, one of our pelagic seahorse species out here in Hawaii. So if you ever get a chance, hit one of them up. They are really knowledgeable, really nice people and are happy to share. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask her if something I said didn't make sense. Um, feel free to let me know and shoot me a question. Hopefully I'll respond to it in time. I'm really sorry about getting to that question late. Um, if your seahorses are spawning and you have mated pair, anticipate that you will have more spawns in the future. Uh, good luck raising seahorses. Have a great day, guys.